morning, sir. Delighted to have you with us. Good morning. So, there were so many concessions, I mean, I think one could argue, right, that there were a number of concessions made uh, in response to farmers' protests across Europe, uh, because they were protesting not only in Poland, but also in, in countries such as Greece, France, and so on. Yet, they're still unhappy. So, what are they so unhappy about? Farmers have it that uh, they're always unhappy. They're unhappy about the weather. It's either too... Uh, the weather is good, so therefore there's too much crop and the prices are low, or the, the weather is bad and the, the, the crop fails. Uh, they're dissatisfied about uh, the price of uh, diesel fuel. Uh, they're dissatisfied about the level of subsidies. But uh, in general, if we look at Polish farming over the last 20 years, there's been a massive uh, improvement in the quality of life that uh, is enjoyed by many farmers, um, many have, have benefited uh, hugely from uh, EU subsidies, from being able to uh, invest in their farms. I live in the rural part of uh, Poland, uh, surrounded by orchards, and I can see how heavily invested the apple farmers are um, around the Grujec region. Um, many have bought uh, brand new uh, tractors. Um, they have uh, anti-hailstone nettings. They have new um, vacuum um, storage uh, facilities for uh, their apples. So um, they uh, now they come out on the streets. They don't like the European Union, but the European Union has been feeding them for the last 20 years, making them uh, competitive and making them and their families a lot wealthier. So um, I, I understand that um, their, their, their concerns, um, that what they're worried about is that the um, improvement in living standards that they've enjoyed um, is uh, could be coming to an end. Um, that they're not going to be um, as um, the, the improvement in their their, their wealth. Um, that they won't be seeing this because of um, the EU and uh, the Green Deal. But the, the Green Deal is important from the point of view of our future. We're seeing the, the climate is getting stranger and stranger. We, we had the, the hottest uh, march on record here in Poland of all time ever. We, and that followed on the, from the, the hottest uh, year 2023 that we had on, on record ever. Um, climate is changing and people are going to be feeling the pain of that. So either we need to, to take measures now to look after the climate for our children and our grandchildren, or we could just carry on doing what we're doing. And I think this is what the, the, the farmers' unions here are um, suggesting, that uh, just keep on paying us out the money. We'll just keep on farming the way that we have been farming. Um, we're not going to be doing anything to uh, change the way that we farm um, in order to try to protect the environment. Um, the other aspect in all of this that particularly worries me is the influence in Russia of all this. We know that Russian active measures are being taken, are interfering within the European Union. The aim is simple. The aim is to break down the prosperity that Europe has because Russia can't get prosperity. It's just being thieved by um, Putin and his cronies. Um, so to stop Russians from saying, look, look at the European Union, it's a success. Why can't we have some of that? Putin is doing everything he can to break down the European Union. Right. So let me ask you this, though. Uh, of course, there are some issues with um, solidarity, right, within the EU, because some of the measures need that sort of uh, cohesiveness and so on. Um, but the UK, right, has uh, stepped out of the European Union. Uh, tell me about British farmers. I mean, are they happier now than there used to be, or uh, what's the situation there? No, British farmers, again, this is it's a group, they are um, uniquely unhappy, whatever happens. Uh, in the run-up to the referendum in 2016, um, many farmers in, in rural parts would have their um, would have placards out saying, um, leave the EU, um, the UK left, um, then the, uh, the subsidies stopped. 
Uh, but the worst thing that agriculture faces in the UK is um, that lack of migrant workers that were needed and are still needed to bring the, the crops in. Um, that is, is, is coming to, um, to, to an end. We've seen situations where, um, for example, turkey farming, um, because of a lack of butchers and, and, and meat packers um, from the continent, has, has meant that many British turkey farmers have just given up. So um, this is good news for, for Polish turkey farmers, as Poland had uh, record sales of poultry to to the UK, but still um, the UK is, is facing massive problems in agriculture and horticulture, mainly as a result of um, lack of uh, seasonal workers, but also um, the, um, the, the subsidies have dried up um, and also um, the, the new checks, the border checks that have come in at the end of uh, April uh, of this year, um, they have made it hard for small importers from the UK to import um, produce from the EU, anything that is uh, plant or, or animal based. So um, all, all in all, um, UK farmers are having a tough time as a result, as a direct result of Brexit. And this should be a warning to farmers in the EU. If, if the EU uh, structures um, break down, if, uh, if your country leaves the EU, um, then um, farming uh, will only take a turn for the worse. Right, so just uh, one last quick question. I mean, some of these concessions that were made towards uh, farmers earlier on um, well came ahead of the um, elections to the European Parliament, right, uh, which are uh, happening um, in early June. So do you think that it, some of these policies could be reversed or some of the issues could come back uh, and be uh, rediscussed? For instance, the Mercosur deal uh, that has been put on hold for now. Um, do you think that it actually could get worse for, for farmers as opposed to, uh, you know, getting better? Well, I think the, the, the scale um, of these protests and the, the, the breadth of them across the European Union um, suggests to the to the European Commission um, and to, to the Parliament too, um, that things are not all right in the agricultural sector and they really need to look carefully, to tread carefully in this area, to, to actually be mindful of, of some of the, the, the farmers' concerns and not to ride roughshod over them. Um, but at the same time, also bearing in mind that this is one of those fracture gaps in European society. This is one of those areas where uh, Putin and his uh, active measures um, can be seen where um, the pernicious influence of, of Russian uh, agents um, needs to be watched for um, at the European level. I think that the Polish government is, is well aware of uh, what's going on. And when these protests started, um, we saw in social media a, a number of people with very close and suspicious ties to Russian intelligence being um, being fingerprinted. So um, for the European Union, two things to bear in mind. Number one, be mindful of farmers' concerns. Number two, watch out for Russian agitation. And on this note, uh, we have to conclude. Michael Dembinski, thank you, sir, for being with us. Thank you.